Hello, 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 hello. It's me, Dave. And I'm back a little later today because I had work to do. But I need to find some music to go over that little beginning part where we sit there and wait for me to get started. It's kind of just a wait for people to get in here. But I noticed for looking back at my video yesterday that I was pretty light down in a way and not down but just yeah, monotone uh, and those who know me know that's not the way that I am um, but I uh, can't change that now so as I said before uh, welcome to let's talk now is what I decided to call it and it's just kind of a daily thing for me to get uh, little things off my chest uh, and if I don't have anything to talk about I may not do them or I may find some other method and hopefully maybe get uh, a couple people um, to join me occasionally so um, about the channel tomorrow we are going to have the video next video up in the building a better army series by Nick uh, Nick knows war war and um, so look forward to that. I do have like a heavy gear blitz video that we did. Uh, my list wasn't all that great. So um, in that one, but it was kind of an example of how you can do sub lists and stuff like that in heavy gear blitz. But um, I'll probably put that out here this weekend. Uh, just plain, no graphics. Uh, so people can take a look at it. Just there's some other heavy gear content, uh, but we will be making some more. You know, we're both pretty busy with things, but um, I talked to Nick the other day and we want to get together and do that for sure. Um, hoping to get a couple people to come in here, but if you do pop in, don't be afraid to chat with me, ask questions. Um, but these are like a daily thing. I try to keep it about 30 minutes or so. Um, so before we get into the main topic, I want to. I was going to show it at the end yesterday, but I decided to go ahead and show it at the beginning as we're kind of waiting for people to come in. Um, this is our diecast of the day, Dave's diecast of the day. Uh, the 85 Honda City Turbo 2. This is a very popular Hot Wheel uh, in the diecast community. Uh, I believe that Rust Belt Racing did a. It might have been Rust Belt. Anyway, I know they were working on or they did for like a heavyweight versions of these like doing races so um, but there's my uh, six that I have and I believe there are like eight or nine total but they were like uh, premiums and stuff and you know, one day I'll get them um, but that's the die cast of the day the 85 Honda City Turbo 2 leave comments on the video um, uh, whether you have those you collect them uh, if they're one of your favorite castings and um, yeah, I'm still working on my track, but eventually we'll run some of those down it um, anyway. All right, so today's topic of discussion for me is the friendly local game store or FLGS. Um, not everybody has one. Uh, I've been to a couple, well, 
uh, it's surprising, like, no matter how small the town, um, I haven't done a lot of traveling. I'm not a world traveler, but I have traveled a bit for jobs and stuff like that, and I've been in a few places, and one of the things that I first do uh, when I get into a new area is look for the friendly local game store. Um, even though places like Walmart and stuff like that, like, are getting more board games and stuff like that, uh, your friendly local game store is the only real option uh, to get things like miniatures and stuff like that. Um, uh, you can get some paints at like hobby stores, but they're really not they're like model color for like uh, Vallejo stuff like that, and they'll work and they're fine. Uh, some people even use the Walmart craft paints, um, and if you put the right dilution and maybe like a medium in it of some sort, you can get a good consistency for paint. Excuse me, but your friendly local game store is is where. Um, you go not only to get things, but to like hang out with your friends and or, uh, other gamers and play some games and so on and so forth. So, um, so for those of us, uh, as I was saying, there are small towns that have them. Uh, their selection may not be as big, but it's a place for people to gather, and that's kind of the important thing. Uh, with the COVID pandemic, we have you know, had uh, less of that, some states more than others, right? There's some states that um, have different laws and stuff like that. Um, here in Arkansas, uh, I think we did one a few months ago where we were actually able to go into our local game store, Nick and I, and play some Heavy Gear. So, or Heavy Gear Blitz. So that was cool uh, because they're a little bit more open uh, here in Arkansas. And, you know, like with Florida, they've had, you know, more open than most most anybody but in some places uh california new york you know big city places like that um you, you won't get into politics but you know, these these places they're they're there um that people have been kind of locked down and places like that just don't have a chance to do anything and they've had to switch to online uh ordering with local pickup and stuff like that so you know that's just one of the things that that, that happens that has happened in the pandemic, but we've had a chance to, to play here and that's, you know, we're lucky in that aspect. Um, but what I want to talk about with the friendly local game stores, uh, is first off, um, well, uh, I owned a friendly local game store for two years, uh, 2017 to 2019. And we actually closed, uh, probably at a time uh, you know that we couldn't have predicted might have been the best time um, considering what a lot of people had to go through with the pandemic um, so uh, it's like July of 2019 um, I can't imagine what it was like for those people to have to transition so um, just I do have some experience in the back end of that like knowing what it's like to own a store. Um, but what I wanted to talk about was more of a player focused thing. So, uh, cause that's what I am now. Like I still talk to some of our local stores and we talk about, uh, my experience in the business and so on and so forth. And it's, you know, uh, I try to help out as much as I can with that. I mean, as much as I know, I learned a lot from that experience and I like to pass on what I did, but I'm no expert. So, um, cause it was my first business. Uh, but what I want to talk about with friendly local, local game stores is players and the support of those stores. Now I understand that there's a lot of people, especially now too. Um, there are a lot of people affected by the pandemic and they have less money and so on. So if this happened, this, this, is a, something that's happened long before that. Uh, it was long before uh, the pandemic or those types of things. I understand that our hobbies can be uh, expensive. Uh, some of us, like myself, uh, I do a lot of trading and you know uh, buying from individuals and stuff like that too. Um, but when I make the decision, the first thing that I do is go to um, the local stores around and 
I'm a little bit different in the fact that I have a lot of things um, from when that store was open, from when my store was open. Um, the new things, of course, uh, like I talked about yesterday, I've not ordered the Blood Bowl 2 player set, um, you know, from one of my local stores. Uh, and um, so I guess what I'm trying to say is um, I understand that a lot of people uh, are trying to find the best deal. Okay, but in that you have to think about. Uh, I'll give you an example. So I had uh, when I owned a store, a customer came to me and he said, "I can get this at X place for this much less, right?" And it was an online retailer. And I told him, I said, "That's fine. If if, if you can get it cheaper there, you know, more power to you. That's that's what the free market's about, right?" Uh, people can charge what they want um, but I said when you do get that I want you to call them up and see if they have a place for you to sit down and play that game that you just bought um, are they offering you a play area are they offering you you know um, you know a place to do what you enjoy doing now if all you're doing is buying things so that you can paint them or you know, put them together, build, and make like diorama pieces, and so on and so forth. And hey, more power to you. Pick it up wherever you want. Um, and then also the other one being, um, you know, as not being a multi-billion-dollar online retailer or a million-dollar online retailer uh, or one of the bigger ones, um, local game stores don't have the ability to stock every product from every manufacturer. Um, and then even though they'd have to wait, even with Prime, two days for Amazon to send it, right? Um, they're not willing to wait two or three days for the retailer to get it uh, for them. Um, so uh, I guess my thing is if you want to continue to have these places where you can go, um, because with the exception of some places and Magic the Gathering players like a Denny's or an IHOP or something like that that might let you if you order food and stuff because um, cards are a lot easier to accommodate than miniatures um, you really need to think about that is it worth the extra ten dollars um, when you can find a half price sale you know on something you're, you'd kind of be remiss to like pass it up, right? And even the retailers gonna understand that in a way. Like if you if you go to miniature marketplace stuff like that, and they're clearancing out things that you know that your local game store is not gonna carry anytime soon. You know, that's the other thing. Sometimes they just don't carry it and they don't have access to it. If that's the case, sure. But I always I always try to check with my friendly local game store to see if they have what I'm looking for. Uh, or if they have access to what I'm looking for, and if you know if it's just a few dollars more, um, I mean I'm not rich, but if it's just a few dollars more, I understand that, that they're providing a service to me that the person I'm going to buy it from isn't going to you know do isn't going to provide for me. And in the end, the doomsday scenario is uh, you don't have any places like that left because you spend all your money elsewhere, and then someone else spent all their money elsewhere, and you only have a few diehards that are you know trying to find it locally. Um, once again, if you do that so you know, kind of due diligence, and you say, "Do you have it? Can you get it? Um, how much is going to cost?" And in the end, they just can't get it for you. Then, by all means, find it where you can get it. Um, and you know, and if you go to your friendly local game store, uh, even if you didn't buy those products, because you know, let's just face it. I mean, selling drinks and snacks and so on and so forth isn't near as profitable as selling the products. But if you're there, buy yourself a drink, buy your friend a drink, uh, you know, buy a snack, um, pick up some paint while you're there. Just the little things that they do carry. Just make sure every time you go in there that you try to, um, you know, if you go in there every day, obviously, you're not spending the money. But if you go in there once a week, you know, try to spend your money in there, a little bit of your money in there. Um, is it going to ultimately in the end, because of for sale, save the business? No. But 
uh, you hear it a lot. You know, buy local, buy local, buy local. Uh, it is important. And for those people who've never tried to run a business or don't know anybody who has a business uh, or even know someone that has a business, but you never talk about that business, um, especially small businesses, you don't, you really don't understand that. You really don't understand what that is like, you know, because the person that buys it off of Amazon will come in, they'll, you know, let's just take an example. They buy a unit for a Warhammer for a 40k army or something they paint it up and so on and so forth and they bring it in to play and they're like oh yeah you know I got this off of Amazon for blah 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 um, it was a great deal um, well you know that owner is there right uh, or someone who works there is there uh, and, and they hear that so <coughs> hey hey enough sorry about that my crazy dog. Hold on one second. Hush! I'm trying to keep them quiet. Uh, these are short things, but sometimes they get riled up by stuff they hear outside. So, anyway, long story short, on that front, um, you know, at least do a little bit to try to see if you if your retailer can accommodate you. Um, a lot of them are working on not a huge advertising budget or you know, a low budget when it comes to stock. They can only really stock the things they know that are going to sell and maybe a few things that they've not, you know, take a gamble on a couple of things. So, you know, speak with them. Don't just come in and do your thing and then leave. Uh, these aren't people that are, um, you know, when I go to Walmart, uh, I do know people there because, you know, I'm there quite often or whatever, but, uh, and I'll occasionally buy something. Like if I go into a Walmart store uh, and there's, you know, a game on the clearance aisle that's half the price. You know, like I bought, uh, I don't think I have it in here anymore. It's up there somewhere. Um, I don't want to knock some stuff down. But it's like this little game called Ramen Fury. It's a card game, and we're going to do a video on that. I'm trying to get uh, my friend Gordon to come with and that, uh, do that. But, you know, they were $10, and they were selling for $2.50. Uh, it's something that my local game store doesn't carry. I know that, or any of them do. Um, and ordering it, you know, there's no way. And they can put it on their order that's come, they're already making if it's from the same distributor. But in the end, uh, stuff like that, little things like that, aren't going to be something that um, they're going to make a lot of money for them anyway. And. Uh, as far as the game company, they've already gotten their money because uh, they've been paid for it already. So that's how that works. The, whoever brings it in for Walmart, whether it's a distributor outside of the company itself or the company brings it in themselves, that they've already sold it to them at the price they're going to sell it for. Uh, Walmart's taking the hit on cutting it in half or knocking it down to 250 just to get rid of it. And that's different at every Walmart, too. Like we have three in the area. And some, and one of them still has Ramen Fury on their, on their shelves for ten dollars. This one is having to clearance it out, so I picked it up. I've done that same thing with Ticket to Ride London. I mean, it was like two fifty for a twenty dollar game. You know, those things are understandable. I'm just saying, do your due diligence. Due diligence. Go to them to your call them. You don't have to go to the store. Give them a call. Send them a Facebook message. Say I'm looking for this game. Uh, can you do you have it in stock? If not, can you get it? And how long would it take? And if you're not looking to have it the next, you know, that same day, just so uh, because you have like something going on, you absolutely need it for. You know, think: Are you really going to? Are you really going to be um, hurt by the fact that it's going to take a day or two or two or three days to get there? Um, and in the end, you're keeping those places to play open. And that, that is important. Um, uh, and like I said, it, it's been talked about many times before. Like, I'm not covering any new ground when it comes to that. But uh, I'm also no longer in that business and you're... You know, some store owners will tell you straight up, and some of them will beat around the bush about it. Uh, I'm just telling you, because I have no skin in the game at this point, 
that you know what you do when you save that extra five or you know sometimes it's even less than that but you save that extra five or ten dollars on something that you could have gotten locally uh, you still have to wait for it to come to you you know uh, what would it have hurt to get your local company to do it for you it builds their business um, their profits which makes if it's, it's a good store makes for upgrading of the facility where you play the store where you play um, more the ability to bring in more products for you when you ask for them. you know those things are important hey that's enough no 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 so sorry about that dogs again but anyway that is what I'm talking about you know it, everything builds you know it, it builds up especially for small businesses so um, which most of them are um, the other thing about funny local game stores is you see way too many people who go into a store like that their local game store and they um, they're just indifferent to what they do while they're there um, they have that mentality, and in some ways it's true, but they have that mentality that the customer is always right, and I'm the customer, and you should do whatever you have to do to make me happy. No. If someone's being outwardly rude to you, they're not paying attention to you when you go to buy something, um, they won't take the time to explain like a game or hey do you, I see this game here what's it like you know anybody who's played it have you played it that kind of stuff and that person's and that employee or owner or whatever is just like strictly just being rude you know being a butthead then that's one thing uh, but your sense of entitlement when going into this place these places sometimes it's just out of whack um, you need to understand that yes you are the customer and that business owner and the employees are there to serve you in many ways but it does not give you the right to, well it gives you the right I mean you have the right it's a free country you can do whatever you, you can do that kind of thing but they also have the right to tell you not to come back and a lot of them won't do that because they need your business because they are a small business but we need to you need to self reflect on that, you know. Self reflect on on your behavior when dealing with anybody in the general public. Um, I mean, if they if they literally treat you like crap and try to rip you off or something like that. Yeah, you have the right to be mad. But to walk into a place that you it's, it, a lot of times it happens with regulars too, you know. Um, and just be a jerk just for the sake of being a jerk because you're the customer and they should be waiting on your hand and foot and doing everything that you want well you're wrong you are absolutely wrong they're providing a service to you um, some of them take extra steps to do so uh, and it doesn't matter where you are it's general polite society at that point um, you affect the people in there you affect the people who are there you know people the people who own the place the people who are there to have fun you affect all those things by your rudeness and I won't dwell on it but that's something that happens a lot so you know it's the number of people that had come to me when I owned my business to tell me that it was other people in my shop that were affecting their enjoyment of the time that they were there um, was way too high you know and unlike some I would go to them and say look I understand you're here to have a good time too but you need to to see how it affects other people I mean that's just being a human being a decent human being and and not inflicting you know inflicting that kind of that kind of stuff on other human beings just because you can so um, pick up after yourself you know uh, you open up packs throw your stuff away 
Uh, you have a snack. Throw the trash away. Don't get it all over the place. You know, this is a place where, where you gather with other people who share the same common, you know, common hobbies. So why would you make it a worse place to be? You know? So that's just kind of like a personal thing for me because I had to deal with it for, for a while. But it, it happens. And it's not just go game stores. It's everywhere. You know? I go into a Walmart and people stand in the middle of the aisle, cart turned sideways. They don't care. They're there and they have the right to be there and do whatever they want. But they don't think about people trying to get through their, you know, who just got off of work and trying to get through the store, get the stuff that they need so they can go. And it works the same way on the local game store level. You know? Uh, don't be a jerk. Clean up after yourself. Um, especially, I mean, you're playing miniatures games and stuff. Uh, you know, you're playing miniatures games and stuff. You know, people spend a lot of time, or your card games, people spend a lot of time and money on their decks, their teams, and so on and so forth. Don't be the jerk that, you know, puts that in danger by, you know, putting your drink somewhere where it can spill and ruin cards or, you know, just pay attention to what you're doing. You know, it started off as like a friendly little game store thing, and it is still. But uh, these are our social places that we gather to do things. We should take that into account. So, kind of wrap things up. I said I would keep these about 30 minutes. Um, friendly local game store. Buy there if you can. Um, Get a great deal. I mean, no one can really blame you. Like a really good deal, no one can blame you. So, but, you know, buy from there when you can. Uh, when you're in the place, when you're in a game store, um, you know, buy a snack. Buy some of the other things that are there if you need new dice. But go ahead and buy them. Buy those, even if it's smaller things, buy something while you're there, especially if you come in once a week or so. Um, you know, just make a purchase. Um, I think Mariah and Ethan, when I owned my shop, they would, that was kind of their, their thought. We're here, we're having fun, we should support the business. Uh, and while you're there, don't be a jerk, clean up after yourself, respect other people's property. Um, stop thinking of them as just stores. They are our social gathering places you know, our places to be. Um, you know, nerds of the nerds and geeks of the world unite. Um, you know, think of those things. So, but that's my few cents on friendly local game stores. Uh, I do want to say before I go, game store owners. It the onus is not only on your customers. If you're being a jerk too it's going to affect your business and you've got to quit thinking about it as just a business it is a business and you're in the business to make money but there are better ways to handle situations than being a jerk um, be engaging with your customers don't just sit behind the counter and wait for them to come to you if they do come to you answer their questions as best you can. If you don't know how to answer your questions, there's somebody in that store who might, one of your regular customers might. Uh, and a lot of times they're very willing to. Uh, if you make an event, make sure that you try to start it on time. I had problems with that sometimes too, but you know, care. A little bit. Just a little bit. That's all I got. Stop it! No! No! You know, like I said, I'm sorry about the interruption, but as you can see, there's animals all around. Um, but care about your customers. Care about the people that are supporting your business. Try to get, try to get things that they need. Stop! No! No, no, no! 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 no.
But anyway, I'm going to have to get out of here. But the same thing for the owners. You know, do the same thing. Respect the place that you own. You know, keep it clean. Keep things wiped down and all that stuff. Tell people, hey, I understand that you're here to play, but try to, you know, respect other people's property and make sure that you keep your drinks off the tables and so on and so forth. Provide places for them to put them that aren't on the tables. Whatever. I'm just saying, you know, it's, it is what it is, but, you know, it's not just on your customers, right? You have just as much to do with the success of your business as they do. Um, if you can't get things, you can't get things. Offer to get things. Explain to the customer exactly what that process is like. It's going to take a couple of days. It's going to do whatever. So, um, you know, so uh, players, customers, just playing, you know, uh, collectors, uh, hobbyists, whatever you are, and the owners, you all have an obligation to make that the best place for you to hang out and play the games that you're going to play. It's not on one person, it's on everybody. So if everybody works together, you can have a great place to be. I'm going to include some of the links to the Facebook pages of my locals. Feel free to comment places, you know, Facebooks and websites for your locals, uh, local stores, you know, promote them. Uh, you know, promote them. Let people know that they exist. Walmart, Target, those places are the only places that have Pokemon cards. So, or whatever it is. So I'm going to get out here before the dogs get too restless. Uh, it's been about 30 minutes. Thank you so much uh, for watching. If you are, anytime you watch, please feel free to, you know, chat with me, ask questions, uh, leave comments. I'll talk, maybe talk about them the next day if it's something to do with what I'm doing. Tomorrow I'm really leaning towards talking about, um, I had it right down to my tongue. Today I was going to talk about for the local game stores. Oh, talk about organized play in general. Uh, from both sides of it. So the owner side, player side. Um, so hopefully look forward to that. Remember, like, comment, subscribe, share. That's important too. Uh, and it'll be about the same time tomorrow. About 3.30, you know, 3, 4 o'clock. Thank you very much. Y'all have a good day and keep asking the question, what game now?